There is only one kingdom. Any other form present or represented is in rebellion or a misrepresentation. The kingdom I speak of has a king and his name is the name above all names. Jesus is his name who is our risen Lord. This is a decree that's almost been resonating in my heart over the last day and a half. And I feel that in order for us to get back to this place, that we only have one true God. You know, we, we live in South Africa, we live in the States, we live in the UK, and we're proud of our nations. But there's something that should be resonating in our hearts at a time like this, that actually we are in this world, but we are not part of this world. Does it mean that we shouldn't care about the nations that we're in? Absolutely not. I think what should be transpiring is that because we are ambassadors of our King who has granted us eternal life, His power flowing through us should impact the nation we're in, that they be the primary beneficiaries that an ambassador of an eternal kingdom is present in that city, in that country. So I believe at a time like this, the people of God are in isolation, not because there's an attack on the church, not because God caused the corona, but it is an opportunity for the people of God to incline their ear once again to know what is the will and the way of God. Things being said in God's name have been abused. But one of my mentors, who I appreciate what he has imparted in my life over the years, said this to me. He said, Keith, the answer to abuse is not non-use, it's correct use. When Jesus ascended, the disciples were disappointed and sad at that. But he said he needs to go so that the Holy Spirit can come and He can be our helper and be our counselor. So the Spirit of God is moving across the earth at this very moment. And I want to suggest to the church, let's use this opportunity to submit to God. In that submission, there was something that really spoke to me through David's relationship with God. He wasn't perfect and I would want to risk in saying that God is not looking for a perfect people. That he did through Jesus Christ for us. Not that we would continue sinning, but that we could no longer be bound by the shame and the guilt through our actions. We can repent, we can be restored to him because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. But David used to say, before you and you alone, Lord, have I sinned. And in that statement, when we submit to God, it's not in our own self-righteousness, choosing to believe that our actions are right before God, therefore we are vindicated. But before you alone, O oh God, have us sinned, is allowing God to search our hearts that we can be in right standing with Him. I believe this is crucial. I honestly believe that God is wanting to move on the earth in power. And by the church having this opportunity to reset their hearts, the way that we've always done things can change. The world is stopped at the moment. It's perceivably being held ransom by a virus, by social media, by the fear. Whatever your persuasion is around it, I would want to say, let's not look at what the world is saying. Let's be like the people of Issachar who knew the times and the seasons. And as a citizen of the kingdom of God, you are able to discern knowing what it is that God is doing. So let us incline our ear to God at this time. If social media is fueling your day, I would want to say, kill it, switch it off. Incline your ear to God. He saved you. He called you for a time such as this. You, you are not alive today just because. You're alive because He chose you to be alive. He saved you because it was His express delight. So I want to encourage you and say, Press into God at this point in time and don't look for things just to go back to normal. Use the time wisely that God might be able to speak to us because God is wanting to move with the people that will be in unity, knowing what is the will of God by the Spirit of God to action and to fill us with courage to do what it is that He's called us to do. So I want to encourage you, church, and I'll pray for us in this moment that God, you would speak to us clearly as we humble ourselves before you, that you extend your loving kindness to us, that the fear that we might have, Lord, you would settle us 
any unbelief that we have, Father, would you forgive us for that unbelief? The anger that we have for the circumstance we find ourselves in at the moment. Father God, would you affirm us in this time? And Father God, as I pray, as people are listening, may you through your Holy Spirit impact, speak. Father, that we'd be able to come into right standing again with you. Whatever we have exalted above you, Father God, open our eyes that we might see it so that we may surrender and heal to you afresh and anew. Thank you, Father, for your continued grace and kindness towards us. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope this short clip brings you some courage and hope, and I'll be trusting that as God is speaking to me, He will speak to you also, that you will be able to respond to Him in faith, knowing what it is that His will is for you in this time.